What is up, family? It's your boy D coming right back at you with another one. Right now, we're back in the lab, and a preview is on the menu. Yes, sir. All right, enough of that. So, what we have here, as you guys can see, is the Peerless STW350. If I can get that focus right there, there she go. And this is by Tiffany. Okay? STW350 is what this is. So, what is this? This is going to be my replacement for my blown Scar Audio VVX12. It's resting over here. Out of the way. She gone, y'all. Rest in peace. But she do have a big sister. And when I say big, I'm talking about big. Now, the sheer size of this thing is enough to intimidate some. Just look at it. How roll surround. I mean, that's, that's kind of standard, right? How roll surround, big old cone. But then you turn this puppy around and you're like, woo hoo 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 hoo. Look at the booty on Judy. Yes, sir. This magnet ain't big for nothing. Let me say that again. This magnet ain't big for nothing. All right? This thing houses an 8-inch voice coil. 8 inches. 8 freaking inches. Enough to sustain 5,000 watts of power, y'all. 5,000 watts. It's rated 3,500 watts RMS power. And it got a peak rating of 5,000 watts. I probably never will even apply that much to this thing, but just to have one and say that I got something that is future proof makes me feel damn good. And if you guys just want to get a peek on the inside, all of this venting that you see right here, that's not part of the basket. If you guys can get up in there and see that, that is not part of the basket as it seems to be. No. That's the actual voice cord. Let me let me try to push it up and down for you guys. You see that? That's part of the voice cord. All that venting is for that 5,000 watts of uh, peak handling that it, can, that it can do. It even has more venting right here in the cone. More venting, and that's all the way around. On the bottom of it, if I can get under here, let me try to give y'all a good shot. You got more venting, more venting all the way around. You're going to need a whole lot of venting with something like this. It has to be able to cool itself down because of the energy that's going to be flowing through it. As a peek at the spider right here or under there. Let me see if I can position it. You see that? Then you got another one up top here oh crap Ugh. there it is a better shot at it right there and a little bit more of that voice call i keep saying an eight inch voice call that's kind of misleading it's not an eight inch voice call actually it's a seven and a half inch voice call to constitute for it being half the diameter of the actual woofer which is 15 inches this is actually, um, or have been actually compared to the, um, the SVS subwoofer that they have out there. It's a, um, I forget the name of it, but it's a 16 inch uh, ultra sub that SVS has put out. And in the rumor mill, they say that uh, Peerless is actually the ones that designed or built, I don't know if they designed or built the subwoofer for SVS, but this would actually be, um, I want to say a mirror image of it to me. The subwoofers are designed pretty much the same, and if you look at the footprint of it, it's not that far off from what SVS has, and it's not uncommon for you know a maker or a build house to have their own version of something they built for someone else or to build a version of what they already have built 
for someone else. You see what I'm saying? That's not uncommon. So that's the reason why you can go to the SVS website and you can see something with a $2,500 tag on it and it got one of these guys on the inside. The only difference is to be honest with you that I can see in the sub and I haven't had an SVS sub in person. I, I have not had one. And I should not even say mirror image, but I think you guys get what I'm trying to say here. It's, it may not be a mirror image of it, but the way that it is constructed and the technology behind it is pretty much the same. Okay, the uh, SBS sub is actually an eight inch, um, has an eight inch voice coil to constitute half of the diameter in which that sub is rated at, which is 16 uh, inches in diameter. And this one here is actually 15 inches in diameter. So the voice core is half of the 15, which is seven and a half. That's what I picked up on it just from the, uh, the numbers alone. But anyway, I am very, very excited. This is not, I didn't even mean to make this a comparison video about SVS and Peerless. I don't even know enough about SVS. Every time I look at their their price tags, I just run away. <laughs> it's like window shopping with SVS and uh and, and your boy D, because I, I just can't afford a whole lot of what they what they spitting out. But to get my hands on one of these, I am very, very excited about it. And once again, I'm gonna give you guys a once over. These are a uh, this is a dual eight ohm subwoofer the only downside that i hate about it but hey i think this was actually attended for a theater setup okay so that's why you got it being capable of a 16 ohm load because for the most part most home theater systems are in between 8 and 16 uh, ohms but you can do some car audio with this it won't go to one ohm it won't go to uh to two ohms or a half ohm or anything like that that you would see normally in a car audio subwoofer of this magnitude this thing here actually of course by being dual eight you can put it either four ohms or 16 ohms and if you want to do car audio you better put it four ohms because i don't know anything uh any car amplifier that can put out 3500 watts at 16 ohms i just i don't know who the hell doing that <laughs> and like I said, I don't know everything. That's why I reach out to you guys so often. But uh, yeah, I'm very, very excited about this. Uh, the amplifier that I currently have inside of my car is a, um, a audio pipe. I actually got the uh, box for it right here. You guys give me a second. This is what I'm, I'm going to be powering it from right here is the audio pipe uh, 2000D. 2000 uh the am the apmn i keep calling you know i've been saying this thing wrong the whole time i've been telling y'all apmi and it's actually apmn 2000 so i'm sorry about that guys i'm surprised no one has uh corrected me on that because i sure have been giving it to y'all wrong but it's the mini design they say it's a mini design this thing is freaking huge but anyway uh this thing here is rated at um, it's rated at 2,000 watts at one ohm. Well, actually, 1,940 watts at one ohm, and at two ohms, um, I think it's rated at 1,300 watts. And at four ohms, you can put about 800 watts or so through it, which is what I'm going to be doing with this guy right here. I'm going to be wiring it down into four ohm and putting about 800 watts down uh, through it. Now, a lot of people may be asking, like, hey, why are you only putting 800 watts through it? And this thing is rated for, you know, shit, nearly five times that, that rating. Well, the reason why I'm going to be doing it is because I believe that in a ported enclosure, 800 watts on this thing will sound damn good, in my opinion. And another reason why I purchased this is because it is optimized for small enclosures. With all that BL and, and, and all of this voice coil, man, come on, this thing is going to be slamming. Traditionally, 15 inch woofers get upwards to what? A three, four inch voice coil. This thing has a seven and a half inch voice coil. So it doesn't need a whole lot of, of, uh, of, of, of volume in order to produce great sound. As a matter of fact, this thing is rated for a, uh, an 80 liter uh, enclosure and a uh, 160 liter enclosure vented. So you, get, you can get it at, at 80 liters is what's recommended 
uh, sealed and then you have um, 160 liters is what's recommended for a vented enclosure. So that's a roughly uh, from two, two cubic feet to about three cubic feet. Uh, three cubic foot, I should say. A cube, three cubic, it's three cubic feet is what I should say uh, for an enclosure. And I already got an enclosure laying around at that volume, but what I'm going to be doing is building something special for this guy right here. And I can't wait. I cannot wait. And I just wanted to introduce you guys to it and let you guys see what the replacement was for the VVX12 and let you guys know, hey, I got some I got some upcoming projects with this buddy right here. Yes, sir. Cannot wait. Push terminals. I'm guessing you can get about, I want to say about an 8 gauge in there. 10 gauge, 8 gauge in there. I'm not gonna need all that to be honest with you. I'm just gonna take what I had on my uh, on the VVX, this right here. I'm gonna use these same cables. It should be just fine. This is what I'm gonna be using. Should be just fine. I think this is actually 10 gauge. I think that's what this is. It used to be written on here, but <laughs> that was so long ago. I think I got this from Sky High Audio. Sky High Audio, I guess I said that right. And uh, yeah, this this will do this will do me just fine. So that's what I'm gonna be wiring in parallel down to four ohms. I'm gonna put this back. Knowing me, I would throw it on the floor and then be complaining later on when I see it on the floor, like my phone is on the floor. But anyway, that's enough of that. I just want to let you guys know what the replay. Oh yeah, another another cool feature before I uh, before I get out of here. In case you guys pick one of these things up, don't forget that this thing is 62 pounds. Okay, 62 freaking pounds. So it's heavy as shit. And these uh, these screw holes right here, I said screw holes for a reason. They actually fit M60s uh, screws. So you, you need some, M6, some, some M60s. I keep saying M60s. I don't know why I keep saying that. I'm thinking about guns right now. Uh, it fit an M6 uh, screw. Is what goes in here. M630s, M6 uh, by 30 is what they recommend for. So I already got some of those ordered. They should be here tomorrow. Uh, it, do have, it does have an upper upper rubber gasket, but they don't have one on the bottom for some reason. There is no gasket on the bottom. And there's two options for mounting this. I shouldn't say two options for mounting. You can mount it how you want to, but there's an additional mounting uh, area here on the subwoofer. As you guys can see, let me get the camera position. If you can, I might take a seat for this one. If you guys look at the basket right here, you will see that that's actually a screw hole. So you can use those M60s, M60s again. <laughs> so you can use those M6 screws to bolt right here as well, so you can build uh, build build this where it will fit inside of the brace of a brace internally, and have it uh, secured here as well. So you got I think eight one two three four yes eight of those all the way around there as well, and it's eight here as well. So it's sixteen screws in total. Is what you would need. I I, I got me a pack of thirty just in case you know how we lose stuff. But yeah, that's the beef. That's the beast right there, man. They call it the STW350, but I'm going to start calling it the behemoth. <laughs> that's what it looks like to me, man. It looks like a freaking behemoth. Look at that thing, man. But enough of that. I'm like a kid. I'm like a kid right now at Christmas time. I feel really, really good about this. Anybody that knows me know I'm going to tear up some shit with this one right here. I can't break it. I mean, shit, it takes 3,000 goddamn watts. I ain't got no 3,000 watts. So all I gotta do is make sure I don't clip and burn it. But with all this venting and all that voice call, one perk to having a large voice call or a larger voice call is power handling. So even if I clip this damn thing, it, it may still survive, you know? All this damn glue and shit, they put plenty of it on there. It's everywhere. I like it. But anyway, let me get on up off here. Let y'all get back to it. 
Until next time, don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a thumb up if you like the video. Thumb down if you think it could have done a lot better. Leave a comment in the section below to help your boy out and share with the community anything you want about this subwoofer right here. Especially if you guys already have one. Please share with us in the comments about your setup, how you built your enclosure, how you tuned it, what you got running it, stuff like that. You know, it'll help us out a whole lot. And until next time, it's your boy D and I'm out.